Hi, my name is Karen Fabian and I'm the founder of Bare Bones Yoga and I'm going to take you through a really short practice, uh, about 15 minutes long, so really short, which actually would be ideal to do uh, before you go off to work or at the end of the day. But I'm going to add in a lot of uh, anatomically based cues to enhance the practice experience and really focus on primarily that aspect of, uh, of yoga practice, the anatomy, kind of what's going on behind the skin. Skin, what are the joint uh, uh, the joint actions the muscles involved and if you're interested in yoga anatomy anatomy this will be right up your alley so let's begin coming to the top edge of the mat I'm going to select uh, intentionally to set my feet at hip width distance apart rather than kind of the traditional stance of feet together I like that because it allows the joints of the legs to stack it's very steady taking the arms, reaching them up to the sky. As I bend the knee, as I forward fold, I'm gonna bend the knees just to give a little bit of slack in the hamstrings behind the legs here. Coming into plank pose, I'm gonna be sure to stack the shoulders over the wrists and keep the crown of the head forward. Um, because we look down at the phone so much, it's really easy for students to drop their head. So along with lifting the head but keeping the gaze down, Actively pushing into the ground engages the serratus anterior, which is the muscle that keeps the shoulder blades flat on the back. Not only that, but drawing in through the core, pulling the belly button in, starts to activate the rectus abdominis up the center line of the body in front, and pressing back through the heels gets the legs involved to help. Take an inhale here, and then press back to down dog. All right, now in downward facing dog, setting the gaze back, the feet will be hip width apart. Bending the knees a little bit will again bring a little bit of slack to the hamstrings, but continuing that action of pushing the ground away and drawing the belly button in, just like you did in plank, should help to take some of the weight out of the wrists. From here, I'm just gonna walk forward nice and easy and then lift halfway up, bend the knees a little bit here too, same reason, and fold forward. Okay, and then reaching up to stand. And when I reach up, I'm really not gonna look up so much in all of these uh, upward shapes, lifting uh, the arms, just to kind of protect the neck a bit. All right, so let's do that again. Reach up, fold forward, lift halfway up, step to plank all right repeat all those actions crown of the head forward heels back pushing into the ground and also we're going to add a little bit here externally rotating the shoulders so if you look down the arms at the inner eyes of the elbows and slightly turn those forward as you press down that will bring the shoulders slightly down the back into external rotation rather than i'm going to show you the opposite rather than hunching and this can be really hard for students because they're weighted on the hands, fighting gravity. But if you can get a little bit of that external rotation of the shoulders here, and then keep it in your down dog, it's another helpful action to integrate into your down dog to keep the shoulders a little safer. From here, I'll bend the knees and walk forward. Lift halfway up and bow. Reach up all the way, and then bring the hands to the heart. All right, now let's uh, integrate moving into low push-up. So we'll lift halfway up, step into plank, keep all those actions we had before, so crown of the head forward, heels back, pushing into the ground, a little bit of external rotation, inner eyes of the elbows forward. Pressing back through the heels. Okay, so this first one will go all the way to the ground. So tipping forward and keeping the head very still, pushing into the ground as you go. Notice the elbows are stacking over the wrists and then to the floor. From here, coming into up dog, if the elbows end up over the wrists, pushing up from here should be good because then we'll end up with the shoulders over the wrists. Pushing down, so leveraging the floor, stacking the joints, shoulders, elbows, wrist, actively pressing into the feet so that we create that back bend in the shape. And then down dog. All right, from here, we'll bring the feet together. We'll lift the right leg 
And then with the lift of the leg, we get some momentum. And this can help students kind of get that foot forward enough. Setting the back heel down and coming up, and just forgetting about the arms for a moment, noticing that the key here to this warrior one shape is to get the back foot in the right position so the hips can center to the front. So the back thigh is internally rotating, right? The front thigh is, or hip, is slightly externally rotated, okay? Really more neutral. And I like to work a little bit of width here rather than having people on a really narrow line. All right, so once that back foot is in the right position, angled slightly forward, the hips will comfortably center to the front of the mat. All right, and then I can reach up. Now, if the pecs are tight, right, they run across the front line of the shoulder, oftentimes students will have the arms bent or out in front. So you can always offer a wider position of the arms. Take a big breath in and then lower. All right, keeping those same actions, pushing down, crown of the head forward, back through the heels, using a little core as well, right? Not so much that we round the back, but just enough so that we prevent sagging and lowering from the core. Want to lower everything together, everything at the same time, right? And I'm intentionally going all the way down so I can really have you work on form. Coming into up dog and then down dog. Okay, left leg up, step forward. A Little bit wider, right out of the gate. Drop the back foot, come on up, right? You could, if you're teaching, ask the students to notice if they're centered. If they're not, it's probably just because the back foot is turned open too much. The hip is more open than closed. Right here I have the back hip and extension, front hip inflection. All right, I can get that centering. I'm using the width to help that. Reach up. All right, and then take it down. Press back as I lower. So notice my feet are not really sleepy. As I lower down, I'm pressing through the heels. Upward dog to down dog. Okay? So now we'll put all that together. So bend the knees, come forward. Lift halfway and bow. Okay, let's come into chair. I like to have uh, students take the arms out first and get the lower body steady. You could teach this with feet hip width for a steadier base or feet together. So once the hips are low, take the arms up, wider at the top if you wish, and fold. Okay, lift halfway, step to plank. All right, now I know people like to lower what we typically hear is halfway, but how about if we lower just a little bit? All right, and this really protects the shoulders. If we go too low, the upward motion can be a bit much for the shoulder joint. It's that shearing force that's not so hot for the soft tissues of the muscles that are around the shoulder joint, the rotator cuff. So you notice if I don't go very low, I can prevent that, right? I'm just about here and then up, and then back. All right, bringing the feet together, right leg up, step forward. Come up into warrior one. You know, take a moment, get the heels down, internally rotate the back thigh. Inhale, reach, exhale, down. All right, as you lower, keep the head steady a little bit. Up dog to down dog. Take the left leg up, step, come on up, All right? Give yourself a moment, if you're teaching your students a moment to find their feet, and then lower. And then up, and then back. Okay, so let's move into a twist. Take the right leg up, step forward, step as wide as you can, stay on the mat, come up. Okay, so crescent lunge is a bit of a balance, you know, the back heel is up. So this is where we start to depend on the lateral hip muscles, so especially the glute medius, to create some stability in the pelvis so we're not tipped. 
because it is a stretch for this back hip flexor, sometimes people will tip forward that back hip flexor is tight. So you could have them bend the knee, or you could bend the knee to get more level in the center. And then bring the hands to the heart, turning, using the block on the inside versus the outside. All right, why is it so necessary to get on the outside and strain the shoulder, potentially? I'd rather just go on the inside and stack my joints and use that stability, that foundation to create the rotation. I'm not gonna overdo it from the neck. I'm gonna keep the gaze low, turn from the side, leaks, and then reach. Maybe I'll look up then, or maybe I don't ever look up, and I just focus on turning from the center. Take a big breath, and then release. All right, you can hold longer. We're just kind of working maybe with a little more pace for instructional purposes. Take the left leg up, step. Use your width. You know, the width is gonna help with the stability. If I take this shape and the back heels up and I do it like a typical warrior one on a tight rope, it's very hard. So the width will help foundation. Hands at the heart, lean and twist. You know, encourage your students to use a block. The height will help the rotation here. So here, we don't want people to rotate in, right? That's our hunching shape. We want them to externally rotate a bit through the right shoulder. And then reach up, twist from the core. Take a big breath and then release. All right, remember, keeping the head still, right? If you start to droop, keep the gaze down, crown of the head forward, lower just a little bit, maybe a quarter of the way. Actively press into the hands and the feet, and then down dog. Walk forward, come up, and then bring the hands to the heart. All right, so not a lot of time, right? We didn't cover a lot of ground in terms of postures, but that um, high to low push-up sequence is just about in every yoga class, many yoga styles. It's done a lot in a lot of classes, and even when teachers say, oh, you don't have to do every low push-up, people tend to do it anyway. So it's helpful to really get a good handle as a practitioner, as a teacher, on what's involved. You know, I didn't cover all of the muscles involved, but I tried to cover many of the key actions so that you can integrate those actions into your practice and into your cueing, so that as you watch people in that particular action and you see the head droop and the elbows out, uh, you can give them some helpful alternatives to create more integrity in that shape. So, if you like this kind of content, especially around yoga anatomy, I invite you to visit my website, barebonesyoga.com. If it's the first time you're there, you'll be presented with a landing page and three opportunities to download free content about a whole variety of yoga anatomy options, as well as some information about building a yoga business. If you've been to my website before, you'll be taken right to the homepage where there is a PDF pack that covers a number of different uh, aspects of the body and you can download that as well. Always feel free to send me emails, questions, comments, I'd love to hear. The website again is barebonesyoga.com. Thank you so much for watching and namaste.